So we're going to look at some very basic dusting for conservation housekeeping or conservation cleaning. The starting point for all good conservation housekeeping is your brushes. You can see here that we've got some beautiful brushes here. They've got nice round heads. This one round here. You can see that each individual brush, the metal piece, has just been taped off with electrical insulation tape. It just means that the ferrule, the metal piece, is just softened so it can't scratch an object. You shouldn't be poking really hard when you dust anyway, but it just adds a little bit of protection. And you can see that I've got two types of brush here. I've got one which is pony hair, it's lovely and soft, and one which is a hog's hair or a bristle. So if you can get hold of brushes that have different softnesses, that one, um, that's always good. The softer one, obviously for softer surfaces surfaces. So you can see that I've written on my brush what it's for. And brushes don't swap. It's like it's like toothbrushes in the house. Everything has its own brush. So I've got one here for gold, for copper, for ormolu if you're lucky enough to have some. Here's my furniture one. And today I'll be using a ceramic dusting brush. So I found my ceramic dusting brush. It's one of the stronger ones but if you're ceramic had perhaps gold decoration on it you might use a softer brush. I'm going to use a brushing motion which is flicking dust off my object and I need to catch the dust and I'm going to do that with a vacuum cleaner. Now I've got a conservation adaptable vacuum cleaner if you haven't then look for an adaption kit. The best place to look for this is in electronic stores um, I think it's normally uh, as a computer keyboard cleaning kit that's where you can find it. But the piece of equipment we're looking for is this. It goes onto the end of your vacuum cleaner here. I just don't know if you can see it, but it's got an adjustable turning point here, which can reduce the amount of air that's been sucked. It basically puts an air bypass in, which means it can really drop the um, amount of suction. So we just want a low level of suction when we're doing our conservation cleaning. So, excuse me while I move around. I've got a vacuum cleaner here set up. So this is the regular vacuum cleaner end. I've got one of these, one of these fashioned over the end. And then it's got just a piece of tubing so that I can have just a light amount of suction as I'm dusting. Just gonna move my object across a little bit. Make sure you prepare your surfaces, keep them clean um, and prepared and you do preferably do this um, away from other objects but if you can we'll be catching the dust in here. Now again you may want to be wearing gloves for this, you'll check each individual item. This one actually is porous so I probably should have gloves so I'll just press pause and I'll go and get some. So I've got my gloves on. Um, you don't always wear gloves for ceramics, the highly fired things won't absorb any pollution from your fingers but because this is the more low fired ceramic I am going to just you know handle it with gloves. The vacuum cleaner I've got is a backpack one and I'll show you in a minute but I'm just going to leave it on the floor and I'm just going to switch the vacuum cleaner on and then show you how it works and then go back to a commentary. So it's pretty hard to talk with the vacuum cleaner on, so I'm just going to do the rest as if the vacuum cleaner was on and just talk through the principles. When you clean something, you're going to clean it from the top to the bottom. And what you're going to do is, you're not touching the object with the vacuum cleaner, you're using your brush, your selected brush, to flick dust into the object. Now you don't want to be pushing right down on the object, you're just using the tips of the brush to flick. So it's all in this wrist motion here, that the flicking. And you're using this vacuum cleaner nozzle or adapter and I've adjusted it so that it was quite a low suction. I did check it before I started just to flick in here and collect it. Now if your object has any mould on it you'll have to do additional work for safety purposes, do a mould risk assessment and wear the 
necessary personal protective equipment but for general museum dust if you keep the vacuum cleaner closed you can actually collect in your dust so that it's not going into your face but you may if you're doing a lot of dusty work want to wear a particulate safety face mask depending on how dusty the objects in the collection are so you would work slowly and carefully around the object once you need to get around the object again lifting the vacuum cleaner and moving around the object so what you don't want to be doing is poking in and, and you don't want to risk banging the object with your vacuum cleaner so if you need to move it around pick the vacuum cleaner up and work around this is if you're doing a lot of work it can be really helpful to have two people you can buy um, vacuum cleaners that you wear slung across the body just watch how they work because they do tend to sort of wobble and lean in and I will show you that this one oh, is a backpack one so I could I, um, I don't know, you can see this, I could wear this as a backpack, Whoop, la, you can see that, Ooh, can you see that? I don't want to get too close to the ceramic and break it. So, clean safe working space, pick the right brush, decide whether you need gloves and a vacuum cleaner to catch the dust.